Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and this is going to be my vlog for the Trans Rights Readathon. This readathon was created by Sim Kern and is a decentralized fundraiser, so everybody is running their own and telling people different places to go donate. A popular one is the Trans Health Legal Fund and also the Trevor Project. I will be linking below those as well as Sim Kern's uh fundraiser and I am directing donations there as well as to uh, mutual aid for a individual trans person that I have been uh, following for the last few months uh, named Bree. And I'm going to start off trying to finish the most books possible in the week with my shortest books. So those are Como Edan Diego a Ser Un Hermano, um, which is a Spanish translation of an originally, I think, English uh, work by Kyle Lukoff um, because I need to read more Spanish books um, and that will have nice easy words that I will understand <laughs> um, and then Call Me Max by the same author they are both picture books and um, I'm excited for them I think they'll both be really cute he's practicing reading so he can read to his new sibling Okay, so I finished my two picture books. Um, reading this in Spanish went really well. Um, there were some words that I didn't recognize, or at least didn't recognize that iteration of the word, but I was able to figure it out from context, so like that's exactly what I want when I'm practicing languages, and I pretty much understood <laughs> what was going on. It starts out with Aiden uh, figuring out that he is a boy. Um, and coming out to his parents and how it took him a while to figure out a name a new name and then it's all about him preparing his mom gets pregnant um and like like i said practicing reading so he could read aloud to the baby and painting the baby's room and all that sort of stuff which is so sweet i love that a lot and worrying about making sure that his sibling has an easier time um being comfortable in their own skin um, and like being comfortable in how they're perceived by others than Aiden did and like making sure that they're raised more gender neutrally. I read Call Me Max which is by the same author Kyle Lukoff and it's a very trans this 101 for little kids um there's stuff about the difficulty of gendered bathrooms and max figuring out that he is a boy as well and also like explain to other kids how he knows that he's a boy and like um rejecting that it's not because he likes uh doesn't like dresses and likes climbing and doing stuff with bugs he just knows that he's a boy because there are girls who like those who like bugs and climbing and there are boys who like to wear dresses and it talks about that and I really appreciated that and um what else it talks about picking a new name and um talking to his parents about it and yeah I think this is a really good informative one um and it's also the beginning of a series about this kid um, and his adventures. I'm also 75 pages into Love and Other Disasters, which has a non-binary main character. It is a romance um, set at a cooking competition. So both of them are contestants. It's kind of like Chopped, um, where you, or like a bunch of other shows that are very similar. Uh, cook a dish and then they judge it and it's a very dramatic and um, there's lots of funny challenges and so far it's really fun. Our other main character is really passionate about cooking and it like helped her get over her divorce which was really a hard hit to her self-esteem and like she suffered from kind of depression after it. Um, and then uh, London, our non-binary MC is less passionate about cooking but still really likes it and is good at it kind of signed up for the show on a whim and um is planning to use the prize money if they win to start a um non in their local area in tennessee um for lgbtq plus youth so that's really cool as well um whereas our female main character has debt to pay off mostly and then I am listening to the audiobook, which is only four hours long, so it's nice and short, 
of Too Bright to See, also by Kyle Lukoff. I'm reading a lot of Kyle Lukoff, um, and it's middle grade, so Kyle Lukoff apparently does both picture books and middle grade books. My library had a whole lot of different Kyle Lukoff books, so I can like continue reading this author after this readathon because I discovered there's quite a bit there. All right, it's day two, and I read Mermaid Days, A New Friend by Kyle Lukoff again, this time illustrated by Kat Uno. And this is a really cute story. Um, it has a mermaid and then also a bunch of characters who uh, are different types of human and uh, sea creatures. So there's like a guy who's a frog and a human and a person who's like a seahorse and a human. And our main characters are a fish human and an octopus human. Um, and they're all just really cute and it's about them finding a new friend and learning about mantis shrimp who punch the water and make waves of water that can like um, disable a fish that they're hunting or break glass and all sorts of cool stuff. And then in the interest of finishing my short books first, I have started Depart Depart by Sim Kern, which is like 75 pages. And it is about a Jewish trans character who is living in a slightly future Texas um, where floods have gotten worse and worse and finally a devastating flood pretty much destroyed Houston and uh, he was in Houston and is banding together with these other queer refugees and has a ghost of his great-grandfather sort of haunting him and also telling him when it when he needs to leave and things he needs not to do to stay safe. Um, so a bit harrowing but has a lot about queer community. So I just finished something that I'm really proud of and I want to show it to you. It's a shell purse. I found the pattern online and was like I could make a rainbow version of that and um so <laughs> I also made the strap rainbow and got these little rings so that I could make it adjustable so it can be like crossbody or over the shoulder and made a little button and I even made a lining for it that's this very pretty yellow fabric that my mom already had and I already had all the yarn um, for another project so I'm just really excited about this um, I'm so happy to have finished it and to have stuck through I sometimes have a problem sticking to <laughs> larger projects um, so yeah I'm really happy with it this little one wants padded but also doesn't want padded yeah we're getting mixed signals. We've got a whippy tail, and we're going, <laughs> yeah, you go <laughs> when she's excited or when she's mad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you just lick your paw. I don't think we need to pet you anymore. So it's the evening of day two, and I finished Depart Depart by Sim Kern. It was really good. I love the queer community and also the main character doing research about, um... Jewish people in history and how um, there is theology about trans people and that's pro-trans people and um, how he can find community among Jewish people even though not all Jewish people are allies. It was a lot about the weight of history and also um, community and um, queer people sticking together and that was really lovely and it gave Depart Depart five stars. Arwen has what some people call the zoomies and in my household we call it being wild like a wild cat. It means they want to play and they also want to maybe bite you. <laughs> Isn't that right Arwen? Maybe, maybe a little bite, maybe a little claws. You're really not supposed to be on top of the bookshelf. That's where I store stuff. Arwen. Okay, so it's day four. And um, I'm reading After the Dragons by Cynthia Zhang. And it's making me cry. <laughs> um, because it's about... Um, this is a world where dragons are as common as stray cats, basically. Um... And a lot of them are stray, some of them are pets, 
they're they have a lot in common with cats but they're dragons <laughs> um and uh it's set in beijing and one of our two main characters basically runs a rescue for stray dragons out of his home they're fairly small um so he can fit like a dozen or so in his house at a time um and he feels like he's not making enough of a difference because there are breeders who breed too many dragons and then there aren't enough people to take care of them and and the people who abandon them and and they're having a drought because of climate change and and that's all stuff that can't be fixed by individuals we have to make laws and stuff and nobody's willing to do that and everything's awful and he feels like he's not making enough of a difference and so the other main character is basically telling him that it does make a difference and kind of about how every life is valuable and if every life is valuable then even if you can't save more than one that still matters making me cry i love this book i love the characters who are two men who have the sweetest love story they're just so gentle with each other and it's so cute and one of them in, is on the asexual and aromantic spectrums and um yeah the whole thing with the dragons um is really precious to me okay so it's friday and i just finished my second audiobook of the week but i hadn't told you about the first audiobook of the week which is too bright to see by kyle lukoff uh, which is a four-hour audiobook um, about a young trans boy, about 11, um, just going into middle school, the summer before middle school, um, figuring out that he's trans, um, with the help of his gay drag queen ghost uncle, <laughs> um, who, uh, passed away and, um, is worried about um the young person not figuring out who they are and so it's a haunting story um but you kind of know the whole time that the uncle is he didn't die in a bad way it was cancer um so like it's not a <laughs> one of those ghosts who's upset about the way they died and we know that he loves the person who he's haunting um so it's like creepy but not scary um and it's about our main character's best friend um kind of putting pressure on him to be more girly and uh conform better to social norms so that they will fit in together better at middle school it ended up making me cry twice when um he was accepted really well by other kids that that really got to me so uh, i gave too bright to see five stars and then today i finished when the angels left the old country which was a recommendation from sim kern of jewish trans authors and this one is about a angel and a demon who are both jewish from uh i think poland um who one of their local young people goes missing um and they set off to find her and it's their epic journey uh, um to a port town uh where this girl was supposed to have been and then um go it goes from there about all their adventures um and the people they meet to try to recover this girl who it looks like has been um gotten into one of those indentured servant schemes where they um charge you exorbitant amounts for the passage to america and then they like um say that you have to pay off the debt and they basically keep you as a slave um one of those so it's about that and those schemes and it's about um how difficult it is for jewish people to immigrate at this time when would this have been uh I'll try to figure out when this is set but yeah so it's about immigration and um the difficulties facing jewish people and about jewish people sticking together and about angels and demons jewish and gentile there's a couple of dibbucks who are um kind of like hostile ghosts who like haunt specific people and will like attach themselves and so yeah lots of cool 
lore and world building and um the most precious thing is uh first of all they meet a lesbian <laughs> jew uh, along their path um who is really cool and uh also the relationship between the angel and the demon is the best part and it's so precious and um it grows and evolves through the story but it is a lot based on their long history together and how much they depend psychologically on each other and they're just so sweet and so yeah um I adored it. Five out of five stars. Okay, so Sasha Lamb, the author, um, has said that it's set during the great wave of Jewish immigrants to America, which lasted from 1880 to the early 1920s, so about a 40-year span there. So I sat down for an hour and a half this afternoon and read Finna by Nino Cipri, um, who's a trans non-binary author, um, and this has a trans character in it. This is about an Ikea-esque store in which portals to alternate dimensions open up and customers fall into them. And even though these are extremely dangerous places, for one, the company doesn't just close the store or rework it so that doesn't happen. Um, they came up with this device that lets you track people through alternate universes and then they send their employees, whoever has the least seniority, um, in to find the people and possibly get eaten by weird plants and you get fired if you don't go. And so it says on the cover, there's a blurb from Annalie Newitz that says, a magical anti-capitalist adventure. Um, it is quite anti-capitalist, which I enjoy. Um, and is about alternate universes and really fun ones. Um, ones that are not at all um, close to uh, the ones that our characters come from, which is pretty much like normal, real world stuff. Um, and yeah, our two main characters are um, a woman and a non-binary person who recently broke up. And so that influences how they're able to work together, because they're the two <laughs> least senior people at this store together. And yeah, ultimately, I really liked it. Uh, four stars to Finna. Okay, it's Saturday, and I'm having trouble keeping track of which books I've reviewed on here and which I've reviewed on TikTok. Uh, so I'm going to catch up totally on here <laughs> uh, so that I know I've reviewed everything I need to on here. Love and Other Disasters, which I'm pretty sure I told you about that I was reading earlier um, before I finished it, and I really loved the conclusion. It was really sweet. Um, I thought the third act breakup made sense, and I really liked how it was resolved. I really liked all the cooking portions. I've seen reviews of people who didn't like the cooking portions, but I thought they were great. And I really loved how much both characters cared about food. Yeah, it was all very sweet, and I really loved the supportive family members. There was some, there was one family member who was not supportive, um, which is very realistic but distressing. But all of the family members who were supportive was really sweet and really, um, I really enjoyed that. And I think that one made me cry at the end too. Hello, it's Monday, the last day of the Trans Rights Readathon, and I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. I'd like to get this video out on Wednesday, um, if that's possible, just a day late, as I usually <laughs> release videos on a Tuesday. But I did finish uh, another book, and that is Lake Lore by Anna Marie McLemore. Um, this has two non-binary main characters, and the magical realism bit is that there's this lake that they live near. The lake sort of expands into their minds, and like start showing up places like underwater plants start showing up places all over the place where they are and um one of the characters is able to sort of send their bad memories into the lake and it creates magical creatures um and yeah it's a lot about the two main characters feeling unlovable because one of them has dyslexia and one of them has ADHD and they have been rejected because of this in the past and have a lot of trouble with school um, and yeah I've just been treated really badly because of it and now they're very nervous to let this new friend they've met as they've met each other know that they're neurodivergent and um, 
that feels very vulnerable and so it's a lot about them hiding that from each other and about how the magic of the lake is kind of forcing them to confront their bad memories and their current difficulties rather than being able to hide them anymore. So a lot of Anna Marie McElmore's books have um, threads of melancholy or even big thick uh, swaths of melancholy. This one was even more so than a lot of them that I've read so far. So this is not my favorite, but that is a very high bar. So I still really liked it. And I gave Lake Lore four stars. And I'm basically gonna take the rest of my TBR, which is like three more Anna Marie McElmore books two or three more full-length novels as well as several arcs from NetGalley and I'm gonna put them into Trans Girl April which is a readathon um, started by Say Kevy that goes for the entirety of April so I have plenty of time to read those books. I went ahead and donated uh, $36 which was $3 for each book if I managed to reach 12 books which I only read 10 but I went ahead and donated that earlier in the week um, to um, Breeze GoFundMe if you would like to donate there as well. They're getting closer to the point where they will be evicted and need moving costs because um, it's the end of the month. Um, but if you'd like to donate somewhere else that's an option as well. I will put more links. I know a lot of uh, my fellow booktubers are also running their own campaigns. Um, so you can join in one of those, or you probably are one of the people running those campaigns or have already donated, so thank you so much. And um, I'm really glad to have gone on this uh, readathon with a lot of my um, friends on booktube, as well as meeting a lot of new people on TikTok and Instagram. And don't feel bad if you cannot donate. Um, a lot of people are strapped for cash right now. Um, and always, if you've engaged in this readathon in any way, even just by watching a video, uh, I appreciate it. Um, I'd love to know your favorite book by a trans author in the comments or one that is on your TBR. And if you'd like to leave an emoji, how about raindrops or rain cloud for uh, going into April? We have April showers. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.